In this nascent ecosystem, India was fast emerging as a global front runner, with its deep pools of technical talent, a dynamic startup ecosystem, and a government that was pursuing a digital revolution on a war footing. According to a 2022 NASCOM report, 11% of the world's Web3 workers are in India, with a remarkable 138% rise in blockchain and crypto-related jobs since 2018. World-class crypto products were being developed here. Those exciting days have since come to an early end, partly because crypto exuberance was punctured by a series of scams, but also because our regulatory responses made it untenable. So, let us investigate what kind of regulatory system is required for the crypto ecosystem to thrive. Even today, despite a crash in crypto prices and the collapse of crypto exchanges like FTX, India's tax deducted at source, TDS, record shows transactions of about 6,000 crore rupees, a steep fall year on year, but significant nonetheless. The government announced two new taxes on 1 February 2022, a flat 30% tax on crypto gains that could not be offset by losses in other crypto transactions, and a 1% TDS on any transaction over 10,000, effective 1 July 2022. These measures were disproportionate to the tax regime for other asset classes, like mutual funds and shares, which have a 15% tax and a set-off against losses. These measures discouraged crypto asset speculation and gave the government a way to track transactions. They also deeply affected the Indian crypto ecosystem as users fled to foreign exchanges to avoid scrutiny. Evidence suggests that instead of exercising greater caution in trades, many migrated to offshore VDA exchanges. As a result, they are now at the mercy of foreign regulatory systems. An estimated half a million Indian investors were impacted by the FTX crash. Recent experience exposes the fact that by not bringing out regulation to treat crypto as an asset class for investment and instead imposing a disproportionately heavy tax regime, Indian VDA exchanges have lost out, potential new use cases for blockchain being developed have been discouraged, and most importantly, India faces the risk of losing out on a fast-rising Web 3.0 market as investments shift to other destinations. Indian policymakers and the Reserve Bank of India have taken the stance that VDAs offer no inherent value. While this can be debated endlessly, there is still increasing demand for such assets. The purpose of regulation is to protect investors and not just punish bad investment products. Despite 2022 being a year of crypto disasters and cleanup, it is unlikely that investments in this space will cease entirely. The responsibility of Indian financial regulation, therefore, is to ensure that future investments are guided responsibly and bad outcomes are managed. While India tries to create a global consensus around VDA regulation, investments must be brought back to Indian exchanges, where they can be monitored effectively. To do so, a hostile taxation regime for cryptocurrencies must be rationalized and brought at par with other asset classes. Regulation should also streamline how crypto exchanges adhere to KYC and anti-money laundering principles, and ask them to publish proof of reserves. This ecosystem needs logical taxation and sensible rules. <laughs>